This video for me is a special one. It is the history, journey, and story of one of my top finds, a sterling silver thimble. These are my stories from the signal. Every time I cross this bridge with my family, I always say, hey, this is the spot where I found that sterling silver thimble. It's become a bit of a running joke, some bad humor, but my family has joined in on the gag, and they all try to beat me to the punchline. I've been told they even say it when I'm not in the car. I chose this spot to detect because it's a bridge, and where there are bridges today, typically there were fords in the past. Most roads today were dirt roads in the past, and before that, walking trails, usually positioned where there was a relatively easy way to cross streams. I found this thimble in the stream not too long after getting my Garrett AT Gold in 2015. At the time, I didn't have my cool fanny pack that I've come to rely on, so I put it in the pocket of my shorts. I kept feeling for it to make sure I didn't lose it. It was my first thimble, and I was super excited. I was optimistic that it was silver, but not sure when I was still detecting. When I got home, I showed my wife. She thought it was cool as well, but doubtful it was silver. Upon cleaning out the packed in sediment, I found the word sterling circling a star hallmark. This thimble was made by Waite, Thresher, and Company of Providence, Rhode Island. The company was originally the B.B. Waite and Company formed in 1862. Between 1873 and 1877, they became the Waite, Smith, and Company. Then in 1884, they became the Waite, Thresher, and Company. They used two hallmarks over the years. They later added a thimble in the interior of the star. Because this thimble doesn't have that, it was made earlier in the company's history, most likely in the late 1800s. Their original address is listed as 61 Peck Street in Providence. This address doesn't appear to exist today. It seems like the company may have existed where a parking lot is. I'm fascinated by how items such as this would have gotten from one place to another in the late 1800s. There were a number of rail lines where the company originally was located. All throughout the Northeast and into central Pennsylvania were a number of routes an item could have taken by train. Perhaps this thimble traveled through New York City, parts of New Jersey, and ended in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Since it is silver, it may have been sold in a jewelry store. Perhaps it was purchased at this jewelry store that once existed at the public square in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. It is likely that this thimble was given to a woman as a gift. It could have been a 16th birthday gift or for some other special occasion. If this belonged to a farming family, I imagine it was a difficult task to get such an item. This thimble likely predates cars. Either a bit of walking to and from train stations would have been involved, or horses would have been used, perhaps with a carriage. What would be a 15 minute drive for us today may have taken hours. When I found this, I imagined a family crossing the ford on horseback or in a carriage. The jostling caused by the rocks in the stream caused the item to drop. Or maybe clothes were being washed in the stream and it fell out of a garment. My wife has a much better story. Maybe a young girl took the thimble. What better serving container for her bear to drink tea from than a sterling silver thimble? Tragically, she had forgotten it. Did she ever tell her mother that she was the one who lost it? <laughs>